64% reporting so far, 20 electoral votes. Do, can the Democrats turn this around? Can Joe Biden turn, out, turn around this deficit 57% to, to 43? Joining me now uh, for, <laughs> to discuss this, and guess, ramifications, Africa, Nigeria, is uh, Nosike Wajide of Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Nosike, good morning to you. What have you made of the drama that we've seen coming out of the United States uh, so far? Uh, with uh, Trump's speech, uh, some like couple of minutes ago, I just watched it on the on your screen. It's uh, it's interesting how I mean, if if you feel like like you should go to court, I mean, you should have gone to court since. Why wait till the end when it seems like um, things are about to turn against you to go to court? I mean, it just seems really. Uh, I don't know if it's right to use the word petty, but it seems petty. It feels like there's fear and. Uh, he feels like he's going to lose, but I don't know. I think um, events will play out till till the end of the week. It will go down to the wire, and um, whichever way it plays out, um, I mean, both both scenarios, the Biden presidency will be changed, drastic change from the way things are now, and the uh, Trump presidency will be not just continuity, but deeper. Whatever he's done before, he will do even more. Oh, thank you for that, Lucy. Okay. So, what about the ripple effects beyond the shores of the United States? Does that reach Africa? Does that spread? How do you see things spreading around, depending on how the outcome is, on who leads the next administration? Okay. Um, in regards to for foreign policy, I mean, there, there are a number of things. I mean, the, the number one, obviously, is the U.S. the United States relationship with China. That's crucial for for the global economic recovery, because I mean, these two countries are the biggest economies in the world. And if a Trump win means that the, the fractious relationship would get even more fractious, it will mean that um, Trump and his protectionist and, and transactional nature would get even more protectionist, get even more transactional. He wants to, he wants to what, what can you do for me? America first, and what can you do for me? Um, the, the whole idea behind um, implementing tariffs against China was to you know, bring some balance to the trade deficit. That hasn't happened. And uh, he will probably look for more, more I don't know, evidence-based um, reasons to implement even more tariffs. But a Biden presidency will see some rapprochement, some, uh, you know, they'll come to the table and there'll be some negotiations, as, as it were, because, I mean, the fate of the global economy, given that you have a recession, you have COVID, you have a likely resurgence of COVID. These two countries need to get together. They need to work, um, even with the World Trade Organization, that have you know, become more globalist. We've seen supply, global supply chains become appended. We've seen a decoupling of the global economy in the last four years, and that should be reversed in the events of abiding presidency. With regards to Africa, for instance, there's the African Continental Free Trade Agreement that should uh, come, come on, come on, to come about next next year, sometime next year. It's been delayed because of COVID and the you know the drastic, the negative consequences of COVID on the African economies. With the event of uh, I mean Trump, a Trump presidency for the next four years. Trump is very bilateral in his approach to trade. I mean right now there's already a, a U.S. Kenya bilateral agreement that's been started and um, it's a model that he plans to use for the rest of Africa. There's the AGOA, the the uh, African Growth and Opportunities Act, which is in place to 2025, we might see that before 2025, he could repeal that act and become bilateral in his approach to different Afri African countries. And if the model with Kenya works, we might see African countries who might be even willing to get that sort of relationship going with the United States and completely upend the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which is supposed to stimulate trade within Africa and, of course, boost uh, production. Um, there's uh, the approach to basically um, U.S. energy dependence. Trump has said, has been very, very categorical in saying that U.S. energy dependence is the direction he's going for. So he would, uh, there will probably be more measures in place to boost local or domestic U.S. Um, oil production, for instance, which could lead to even more, you know, the U.S. We saw in 2016, 2015, 2016, we saw global oil prices crashing because of uh, a glut in oil markets because of oil, shale oil from the U.S. We might see that again if Trump has his way where oil prices, um, the U.S. production, the U.S. remains, the, because as, at the moment, it's the number one producer of oil, either number one or number two, then it, uh, Trump will ensure that continues and there will probably be a glut in the market when there is a uh, you know, this resurgence in COVID and there's the, the demand outlook is looking really gloomy at this time. So the two, the two candidates are at, uh, you know, polarizing ends of uh, the spectrum when it comes to policy and foreign affairs. 
Thank you so much uh, for that, Nusike. Okay, we've uh, got less than a minute to go. Can I, can I put you on the spot to predict who wins? Why, why the time? Who, who wins? Or would you rather defer <laughs> until Friday? <laughs> My my heart says uh, Biden, my head says Trump. So there you have it. I, I can't I can't give you. We'll, we'll see we'll see how it goes. The CK Wajide of Financial Derivatives Company Limited, head of economic uh, research there. Thank you so much uh, for joining us and giving us uh, your insights.